We're almost live on Facebook too. I think we're live. We did it. We Yes, we are. Yes. All right. We did it. It's an hour later, but that's okay. Later is better than ever. We are yes. on you guys because Woo! if it's Friday, it's window treatment Friday live. God darn it. <laughs> and we weren't going to have you guys miss out on this one because this is a great episode. So we apologize for being 45 minutes late, but in the world of technology and trying to figure out how to bring um, our presentations to you in the best way possible. It kind of took us 45 minutes to figure it out, but you know what? We did it. So big ups to us. Yeah, that's right. All right, <laughs> shall we get started? So today's episode, to, today's topic is motorization. And it's kind of hard to believe that in 47 <laughs> episodes, this is the first time we're really talking about motorization. Absolutely. And it's it's all the rage. I mean, that's what that's where window treatments are at, if you will, right? It's all yeah. about Alexa, do this, Alexa, do that. And it's all about voice <laughs> control and controlling things via a remote or an app. And so window treatments are not behind by any means, but maybe yep. it came in our little 40 47 episodes <laughs> behind, but, but here we are in 45 minutes. Anyway, let's just get started. So the uh, first of all, I wanted to um, tell you about the four main um, things to know as it relates to motorization. And, and that is, you need to know what kind of product you're motorizing. You need to know how you are bringing power, so how you're bringing juice to those window treatments, mm -hmm. how you're mounting it, and ultimately how are you hiding the, the cords. And then number four is how you're controlling the window treatments. So you don't need to know all the details of how, you know, what all the, you know, subsections and, and the bullet points underneath every, every single one of those four, but those are kind of like the four main things to think mm -hmm. about when thinking about motorization. Okay. So this project here, this is an example of motorized treatments that we did in Manhattan. They're really popular in, um, well, they're, they're, I mean, in the beginning when we first started doing motorization, I guess 10 years ago when it, at the beginning of it, um, we do them a lot in New York City apartments. And now you're seeing them in everyday life. So this is an example of an Allure shade from Lafayette. So it's the sheer banded shade that when, um, right now you're looking at it where you can see through the stripes and then the stripes will line up like so and kind of create like a roller shade effect. Now, as you can see, the way the positioning of these windows are, they're corner windows, you have a desk in front, you have the air conditioning unit next to the desk, so, and then the closet, the, the built-in right there to the left of it. There's a lot of things happening that it's kind of a pain and a little tricky to lean over all those elements to always move your window treatment. So that's one of the one of the key reasons why this client wanted to use motorization for this application. One for the convenience in order to get to the window and not have to fight all the elements to get to the window treatment. So it was just a simple click of a button, the window treatments go up and they go down. Um, and you're able and they for this particular couple, um, they each wanted a remote on in one of in their nightstand. So we ordered two remotes. <laughs> and for this, it was something motorization. So there's are there are different motors and different motorization types that we can use that we'll get into that. But you could use it down from a simple um, hard treatment all the way up to crazy soft treatments that we're going to show you also in um, this live. In a little while. Okay, okay, tell us more about this, Kim. So this is an example of the Hunter Douglas Silhouette Dual Light. So, and the best way to operate this particular window treatment, again, is with motorization. So Hunter Douglas has their own remote. This is what you call the Hunter Douglas Pebble. So you can pick the different colors of the pebble itself. And then the remote inside comes in different colors. I think it might be seven different colors. For the most part, um, we order black or white. I have ordered like a neon green. Yeah. yeah, we use white. Most I've ordered of the, time the neon too. green color once, and it was for a kid's room, and we kind of just did that as a surprise because the um the child was seven and was really into motorization, and their parents were like, "Sure, let's do a motorized duet." So we did um the really cool kind of funky um color remote. Now with this one, what we're showing you here is the um the silhouette because it's not always a room darkening product on its own. Hunter came up with a way to have a blackout shade behind the silhouette in order to make it room darkening. Full disclosure, I 
edited this photo so that it was brighter so you can see the three different um options that this feed, that the hunter douglas silhouette dual light shows the actual picture itself is pretty dark um but in order for you guys to see it that's why it's kind of edited out a little bit so this client but that's has, okay what you were trying to yeah. really attempt to show is the difference between the, the blackout portion and the light filtering right. portion and so this client has three other windows in this space so you could imagine six windows who wants to move six windows at night i know i don't so with this small yeah so the way we have it programmed is we have each shade has its own channel and then there's the all button if you can see it right here and so if you want to hit all the if you want to see all the shades go down you just hit the all button and then they all go down up and down what's also cool with motorization is you have a favorites mode so if your favorite mode is the room darkening, you can just hit that and we can program the shades so that it goes right to your favorites mode, which is the room darkening option. Nicely uh, done. Yeah. We're good here? Yep, we're good. Okay, so what I wanted to show with this slide is how to power, like to show you how the motor is powered. And this particular one shows how Hunter Douglas powers there. So mm -hmm. the picture on the upper left is a duet. And the, the little white thing at the top of that duet, the duet is kind of, we'll say, orangish, beige-ish. Mm -hmm. The little thing at the top of the duet is called a battery wand. The picture on the right, it shows you the casing in which the battery wand can be housed. And the picture at the bottom shows you the actual battery wand. And uh, what it is, it's, it's a long casing and it has... Remind me, Kim, is that 16 AA batteries? Yes, yeah, some are 16, That's some are 12, and it's depending on the size of the shade. Right, right. So I just remember it's like an exorbitant amount of batteries to, yeah. to use. And yeah. then, of course, the the next immediate question is, well, how long do the batteries last? It's really impossible to tell because it all depends on how often you're going to be using it. If mm -hmm. you have a, that, that seven-year-old kid who is going to be standing in the room and going boom, 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 boom. <laughs> then that's of course is going to be a lot lesser of a lifetime than somebody who just uses it every morning and every night. So, so this is the way um, Hunter Douglas presents their, or rather how they power their motor through just your regular AA batteries. Um, and uh, I also wanted to show you a couple of examples where the battery is not necessarily a AA battery, but there's also a lithium um, battery, a lithium ion tubular battery. And also there are some situations where, and Hunter Douglas uses those as well, is where you have the, the C size, like really big, big mm -hmm. batteries there. So now when would you use a battery type of motorization? And really what we're talking about here again is you have a motor, right? But the motor by itself is a pretty dumb thing. You have to bring power to that motor mm -hmm. so that it knows to turn or to lift or to stack. So the motor needs to have juice, if you will, to do something. And that juice is, bring, is brought by some sort of power. And that power mm -hmm. can be done three ways. So that's just, I'm kind of stepping back here for context. So now Number one of those ways is a battery. And like I said, it's either a C battery, AA battery, or a lithium ion tubular battery. It is the easiest way to motorize a shade or a, any window treatment. It's mm -hmm. It can be done after it, you don't have to break walls. You don't have to do any kind of hard wiring. You don't need an electrician for that. Mm -hmm. All of this is just an additional battery pack, like I so, showed you in the previous slide, that connects to the motor and then the motor decides not decide the, the motor does what it needs to do either turn rotate stack whatever it decides to do so that's kind of the easiest way to mm -hmm. uh, to power a, a motor and then another another pretty easy way to power a motor is through a plug-in and that's something that we've been using a lot it's really prevalent right now with roller shades so mm -hmm. the plug-in um, charger you're seeing is in the upper right hand side picture and that's very similar to like a um, phone iPhone charger. Cord. Yep. Exactly. So the the big pack is going straight into the outlet. The little piece is going into your phone or in this case it goes into the motor. 
driver. So what happens, there's a little wire that comes out of the motor and has, let's say, like a female end, and this is a male end, they connect, and that's how the motor charges. The best part about this is that there's no batteries to replace. Okay, mm -hmm. so there's, you don't have to go to the store and buy 12 or 16 AA batteries or however many C batteries and, and have to throw out the old ones and put in put in the new ones. This is very much like any kind of electronic that you need to recharge, i.e. cell phone. Another mm -hmm. good part is that recharging doesn't have to happen every night or every two nights, depending how new or old your cell phone is. Mm -hmm. The good part here is, of course, it all depend is dependent on the use and how often you use it. On average, however, the lifespan of a tubular motor is anywhere from eight to 12 months. So, and another good thing is it charges overnight. So you mm -hmm. can plug it in at night, uh, you plug it into the motor, plug it into the the other and goes into the outlet. You will keep it there overnight. And then in the morning you come in, you unplug both ends and boom, your window shade is functional again. So that's a, that's a really prevalent method for roller shades right now. That's a rechargeable motor. It's the lithium um, ion motor and it uses this type of charger to get recharged, much like a cell phone. And so that's also a pretty easy way of doing it, but only certain motors can be recharged like that. And like I said, I know of just the tubular motors, which, which are used in roller shades. And then mm -hmm. the final way of getting juice or power to the motor is <laughs> through hard wiring. And hard wire is, mm -hmm. is in layman's terms, the way I can explain it is that you have the main wire in the house. So like, just imagine a house wire, and mm -hmm. then you have the wire coming out of the motor and they're literally like twisted together, spliced together, uh, and that's done by the electrician. So that you need yes. a license for that, you need to, you really need to know what you're doing. Otherwise, yeah, you just don't want to mess around <laughs> with that. So I think it's pretty obvious that anything that can be either plugged in or chart or fueled by a battery is the easiest way to do it. Mm -hmm. You don't need anybody, any professional. You can replace those things. You can recharge those things. However, there is some element of doing something along the way, either replacing or recharging. Whereas with the hard wiring method, you don't really, once it's done, then it's like done and forget about it. Right. But in order right. to get it done, you need to have a professional to do it. And it's best done when the house is under construction. So we usually start talking about the hard wiring possibility for motorization once the um, uh, if if the GC or a builder or an interior mm -hmm. designer brings us in as the house is being constructed. If yeah. it's a yeah. Um, if it's a if it's a situation where the house is done and we are just putting in the window treatments into an already built house, then we'll start talking about the types of sources of power that can be plugged in. Yeah. Now, just I, I it's changed this year, but Hunter now has a rechargeable battery that we can use, and uh, Comfortex also does. So with for the, for roller shades or for other treatments? For all treatments. So that's, like, that's pretty great. That's, that, yeah. that, that's brand new. Yeah, that's brand new because we have Comfortex shades in Vinny's office that are motorized, motorized top down, bottom up. And yep. those are, re are rechargeable. We have one here in our showroom that's rechargeable too. And uh, yeah, Hunter, awesome. Hunter just brought the whole rechargeable battery game. Uh, Finally. Products. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> exactly. because they've been, I mean, as, as um, innovative uh, as they are. Thank you. That's the word. That's the it, one thing where they, they were really lacking for a long yeah. time. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So this project here, what you're seeing, there's a ton of motorized window treatments in this, in this project. So you're seeing the hobbled Roman shades. And this was a, like a trapezoid kind of a window. And this, this particular client, this was done for um, Susie Chusid, the designer, and th this is her, for, this was for her client. And with this particular one, the um, Romans at the top are motorized, mm -hmm. and it is with a um, it's a it's a heavy motor, so it cannot be it could not be battery. And since the house was already constructed, there was no getting wires through. So mm -hmm. what we were able to do um, with the uh, electrician. He was able to put outlets where we needed outlets to go. And so these are plug in with a, like they have to be plugged in at all times. So, um, because we also, is the, the type of motor that we needed, cause this was a velvet hobbled Roman shade. 
Wow, um, that sounds very heavy. Yes, it was very heavy. And we did this, I want to say we did this 10 years ago. So yeah. everyone kind of thought we were a little nuts with like, would we be able to pull it off even where, um, where we got our motors from, the workroom that we got our motors from, the head of motorization there thought like, this isn't going to work. I don't, I mean, you guys are taking a chance and we're like, let just give us the motors, we'll figure it out. And so Billy was actually able to, our workroom made the Roman shades and we were able to, then he had to kind of take it all apart, so to speak, and add the bigger tube with the motor and everything else to make it work. Um, Cause this was even before the workrooms were even doing motorization and things like that, that we were just kind of like, wait a minute, how are we going to do this? Are we going to attach it? So we'd like, just make us the stuff. We'll add the motors. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. we, we had to figure it out. And then yep. with the drape underneath, we did a Sumphy motorized drapery rod installed into that cornice. And again, mm -hmm. there was an outlet over there on the right-hand side that we plugged the rod in because it was non-decorative. And so with the click of a button, again, with the Sumphy remote, the clients were able to open and close their window treatments without having to get up and just from the luxury mm -hmm. of their bed. So this was one that um, it was kind of like the kickoff for us on really thinking out of the box with motorization. And it was something that we were quite proud that we were able to pull off and, and accomplish for the client. Especially 10 years ago. I mean, motorization has been hot, but I don't think mm -hmm. it's been really hot for 10 years. No, I, mean, I think maybe the last five years, maybe three years, that's when it's really, especially with the introduction of Alexa and a mm -hmm. lot of the voice activated devices. Right. But 10 years ago, certainly we didn't have that luxury and that convenience. So you guys were quite the pioneers. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was one that I still remember when we walked into the room and I just thought, well, I don't even know how this is going to be possible. <laughs> Not even like where we got our, our, the motors from. They just, they thought we were at it like they thought we were crazy. I think the bigger Roman shade two might have two motors to it because wow. of the weight. Yeah. Yeah. And again, this is going on 10 years ago that the motors have changed and the weight um, and the noise of the motors have also changed too. So there's, it's, it's come a long way. <laughs> Okay, here I wanted to insert this picture for you guys mm -hmm. to show what uh, what it looks like when the contractor or the mm -hmm. interior designer brings us in before the house is closed up. So clearly this is new construction and the designer knew with the customer, they knew that they wanted to do motorized window treatments. So before the contractor ran the electrical wiring, they brought me in to say, what kind of window treatments can we install? here how can they get power to them and how do we want to control it and also how are we going to hide the according so if you remember i started the very first slide with those four criteria that you have to think about it when you start discussing motorization and as kim and i always say for those interior designers listening you specifically don't have to know the answers to those questions mm -hmm. but those are the four main questions to ask what kind of product are we using what kind of motor are we um, putting into it? How are we controlling it? How are we, uh, rather, not what kind of what kind of product? Um, how are we getting juice to it? Mm -hmm. um, how are we controlling it? And how are we hiding the cords? Okay, so those are the four things to know. Okay, so this is an example where the house is open, no electrical is done yet. They bring me in and they say, what do we do? How do we do it? So we decide on uh, roller shades and then we decide that they're not going to be hardwired. They're going to be a plug-in roller shades. So I showed them, I, I gave them the specs. I gave the general contractor the specs mm -hmm. of the kind of wire that he needs to run where he needs to run it to and the locations of the outlet mm -hmm. so in the insert on the kind of like the lower right hand side there's an insert the kind of a picture insert of us spray paint Thing, arrows of where the wire needs to come out so that's for the rough end stage and when the when it's time for the electrician to actually do the junction boxes and and the the actual outlets that's when i come in again and show them not just kind of like the general area of where it's, it's going to, where it's going to be but specifically i put an x mark on where mm -hmm. that junction box, box needs to be placed so that's an example of 
let me see, do I have the next picture? Yeah, here's the next picture of, of the place all finished up. And there with an arrow, I'm showing where the outlet was positioned. Now, this was a really mm -hmm. big outlet and it was also three dimensional. It's not one of those with, where the, the box is inside the wall, but this is because we knew that the, we were going to hide it with a cornice box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we ultimately decided to do a cornice box on the top of the window, but the roller shade went in inside the window. So here's a, a really great example of where a window treatment specialist was brought in early enough in the process where all these window treatment decisions need to be made ahead of time, not ever an afterthought, not when the house is constructed, when the walls mm -hmm. are closed up, when everything's installed, and now you're like, okay, I'm moving in, I need two things, I need... <laughs> toilet paper and I need window treatments. Now what do I do? Yeah, so exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always say, you know, you're gonna need two things when you're how you know you're all like making all these decisions when your house is being built and you're so fatigued on all these decision making, but still you move in and you're happy, you're like, oh crap, you know, everybody can see me. I really need some window treatments. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anyway, so that that was a really good experience for the homeowner, the designer, and myself included, where I was able to do all of that ahead of the time. Oh, great. Okay, so this is an example of a project that we did for Diane Papero, uh, interiors out of, uh, she's based out of New York City. This was a project of hers here in New Jersey. And this window treatment, this panel is 16 feet wide by 18 feet long. Now, you could imagine trying to operate that manually would be really That's tough. It's, it's almost like having to do like um like an auditorium curtain where you're sitting there trying to like open the curtain and everything. Who wants to do that? So and nobody, <laughs> nobody. And what this is is it's installed. I know it's kind of hard to tell in this photograph, but it's installed on a decorative, um, motorized rod. This the the rods are from Paris, Texas, and mm -hmm. so um. With this, we had the electrician put an outlet on the right side of the window treatment because this is a one-way right panel. And mm -hmm. this way, we were able to run the wire that gets plugged into the wall behind the window treatment. We were able to hide it, so you're not going to see it. Now, the tricky part was trying to get an 18-foot cord or a 20-foot cord um, in order for it to extend. We did... Um, uh, so that's all kinds of things that you kind of have to specify because I think the standard might be like eight feet. So we needed yep. an extra 10 feet. So mm -hmm. um, those are all things that uh, in terms of designers and clients, you don't really have to think about that. But as window treatment professionals, those are the kinds of things when we're taking into account how long of a cord do we need? Where are we installing it? Where the outlet is? And luckily we were able to have an outlet moved so that mm -hmm. it could accommodate the drape because when the panel was completely stacked open, you don't want a cord running through and seeing like this random cord to be plugged in there in the wall. It wouldn't I look so pretty. You have a picture of the drape stacked. Yeah, yeah. So Isn't this, this it? is it. Yep, that's it. So we're just showing you. It's not like the prettiest of picture. This is, we were, Billy will often tie the drapes off so that it can sit there and form its pleats, especially on something that was this wide. So that's really what you're yeah. seeing here is the drape tied back. Um, you didn't see our ladder in the front because we were literally finishing up the install, but I wanted to show you how sure. much, um, what the big difference is and how important it is to see that whole drape stacked into that section there and it stacks pretty tightly. So, um, and by doing the motorization, you're able to open and close it without having to think like, all right, how are we gonna do this? And it, it just creates a beautiful backdrop to this um, great room for this client. And so the outlet, let me just go back to the whole outlet discussion. Did you say you the electrician moved it from, a, or he, he gave you another outlet, right? Yeah. There wasn't one was, where you wanted. There wasn't one and he was able to power it through another outlet. He was able to tap off of the, out, the one outlet yep. that was on the one wall and then run it through. So like that's the good yeah. part sometimes is that if you have a really good electrician, they're able to um, move, move outlets or give you an outlet essentially. Mm -hmm. Another thing that we've done, and it may or may not have been possible in this case, but it was possible in a couple of cases that we've done it where we had the motorized drape and we needed to. So pretty much the idea is all, this is Glidea track you said, like a Sanfi Glidea type yes. thing? Yes. Um, be, be, behind, behind the decorative fascia from Paris, Texas probably. Yes. So they are, 
they're they're all mostly plug-in at least that's how i've done it i yeah. think they can also be hardwired but mostly the way i've done it was plug-in and just like kim said it's you need to have an outlet and so in her case the electrician moved it but he moved it towards the bottom because he was working off of another outlet we've had cases where the electrician was able to give us an outlet all the way at the top so we mm -hmm. avoided the whole case the whole challenge of looking for that additional cable right right because the standard like she said is i think at most is eight to ten feet but you can also request it shorter or you can just tie it up and nobody can see it up there but that's what just mm -hmm. put the outlet all the way at the top right next to the motor and just plug it right in yeah we have another project that's going on right now that we're actually doing for the first it it was a, one of the first times that we're doing it's a decorative rod motorized rod non fascia so it looks like a like a like a standard traverse rod that we would use like a baton trawl rod and it's from forest yeah. and so um for yeah. that one the the electrician gave us the outlet by the rod but at the top. Yeah. yeah at the top because it was still in construction and in stud so we were able to do that but yeah so the yeah. motorization has definitely made a leap this one was done two years ago and to vita's point it's the like standard non-decorative rod with a wood metal fascia in front so the the, mm -hmm. the the not so pretty part is what's making the drape open and close like a, just a typical kirsch rod uh, like you know just a non-decorative rod traverse just, rod. Just, mm -hmm. yeah traverse rod thank you and then we were able to have the decorative front uh the decorative um wood fascia in the front but for this project that we have going on right now they wanted something just sleek simple metal and so I was able to find uh, Forest has something that yeah. you're able to do that. So, yeah, Forest is it. a really good resource mm -hmm. for, for motorization, I found as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. And so here I wanted to show um, that that window treatments can can be controlled not just with the remote control mm -hmm. that Kim showed, but actually with with an app on your iPhone. So let's see if this works. Oh, I inserted a video into a PowerPoint presentation. How cool am I? Only because Stephanie taught me how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> we got to love so, Stephanie. You, you guys, yeah. look how cool. Watch this video. So nobody's at the shade. Nobody's at the window. There is a phone, and, and we are controlling the shade on the app on the phone via an application. So this is how cool motorization is nowadays. You can just have your phone and you can do it anywhere. That's the beautiful part. This particular mm -hmm. video here, I'll start it again just because it's so cool, why not? <laughs> so in this particular case, the we're controlling it from the same room, but the beauty of it is that you can control it from anywhere. You could be, I don't know, in the Bahamas, probably in Mexico, right? And you're like, oh, I really, I forgot to close down my shades and I don't want anybody to know that I'm not home. You can go on your phone bring it down the shades go down ba -ba boom done I mean that I think is just like incredible I I have clients that we call them well, they're snowbirds they go down yeah. to Florida in the winter time and that was one of the things we um, I did their whole home motorized and that was one of the features that they wanted was so that when they were away they had the opportunity to have their shades move Mm -hmm. So like it looks like that someone's at the house or someone's home so that they just randomly move them from time to time <laughs> from their home in Boca. That's <laughs> so, funny. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. pretty cool. And so you guys, it completes our episode for today. This is yeah. just a very brief overview of motorization. It just, uh, as always, we wanted to tell you and show you what is possible. Again, you don't have to know all the specifics and all the nuji details, mm -hmm. like Kim likes to call them, and I've, I've appropriated your term, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> so the nuji details is not up to you to know. But we, we, Kim and I are the ones to know them. But what's important in these episodes, we tell you the type of questions to ask so that you mm -hmm. can have intelligent conversations with your own window treatment persons, people persons. And uh, in this case, a lot of times I've, I've learned from some of the designers that I've worked with and have taught through classes mm -hmm. is that motorization can be um, uh, not just challenging, but um, intimidating. That's the word I'm looking yes. for. And and talking to electricians and talking to general contractors and kind of like not really knowing where to start and how to say it and like even understanding the terminology. So we just kind of wanted to give you a very bird's eye view overview of what is possible. Mm -hmm. 
So anyway, so to conclude this episode, Bless you. <laughs> to conclude this, this episode, as it would conclude every single episode, we want to give you a couple of free goodies from Vitalia mm -hmm. Inc. It is a free curated lookbook filled with inspiration and education. It's called 37 and a half window treatment ideas to use, swipe, steal, and just use immediately on your next design project. And you can get that on vitaliainc.com. Perfect. And uh, if you are new to the window treatment game, Luann wrote an ebook. Uh, Architectural Digest isn't coming. 10 things you need to know about custom window treatments. So it's kind of a window treatment 101, if you will. So you could head on over to the Window Works website and download that today. Hmm. And then to keep up with all things Window Works, please follow us at Window Works on Facebook and here on Instagram. If you are in the New Jersey or New York area and you have a project, whether you are an interior designer or a retail client, please give us a call. We would be happy to help you on any of your window treatment and awning projects. <laughs> Oh, and if you want to know what's happening in the podcast land with Luann mm -hmm. Nigera, of course, the WTF Live edition, which is what mm -hmm. Kim and I do here, was a spinoff mm -hmm. of the WTF, the Window Treatment Friday podcast edition that Luann and I started a few years ago. So if you want to know and keep up with Luann, definitely check her out at LuannNigera.com. Yes. And then if you are in the Philadelphia area and you're an interior designer who is looking for support with your window treatments, we would love to support you here at Vitalia Inc. We are a one-stop shop, your go-to resource, VIP service, white glove, concierge level type of resource, inclusive, exclusively rather for interior designers. Mm -hmm. We are a fabrication, installation, measurement and project management company as it relates to window treatments. So please give us a call or a DM me, PM me, email me, and we would love to support you on your next project. Alrighty, everyone. Well, that concludes our episode. Again, we appreciate you bearing with us and uh, with our tardiness today, but we wanted to just be able to really give you the best of both worlds here on Facebook and on Instagram to be able to show you everything. So it's, it's we work hard for you guys because we enjoy doing this every week and we want to be able to give you the best presentation as possible. So thank you for your patience today. And also I want to let you guys know as a little sneak peek preview that <laughs> our one year anniversary is coming up. Yes, yes, yes. Believe it or not, Kim and I have been doing it for a year and mm -hmm. we will always know it can because we started during the beginning of the pandemic right it's yes. one of those where were you when x blank happened well yeah. at the start of the pandemic kim and i decided to start these episodes <laughs> <laughs> so and we're coming up on a year so in just a few weeks we will have a very special birthday slash anniversary episode for all of you we're going to have special guests with us we're going to have giveaways we're just going yes. to have really special episode we would love for you to join us please follow us on Facebook and Instagram mm -hmm. and um, also you can sign up for both of our newsletters by grabbing your free goodie that we just told you about and if you follow us on any one of those mediums you will never miss an opportunity to connect with us yeah. and you will know exactly where we are at all times business related of course and um and you'll know when when that anniversary slash birthday episode is and it's just coming up in a few weeks. So stay tuned for that. Yes. Already, everyone. Well, we hope you enjoyed today's episode. We hope you have a great weekend and we will see you next Friday because if it's Friday, it's Window Treatment Friday Live. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Have a good day. Bye.